Hi students, the very first topic that we are going to cover today is gene therapy for inherited diseases. Most often the students are confused whether a chromosome forms part of a gene or genes form a part of a chromosome. As we can see in this figure, chromosomes is made up of highly supercoiled DNA structure and each nucleotide sequence on this DNA structure forms a part of a gene. So basically genes are located on chromosomes. Chromosomes they are composed of DNA that is wrapped around chromatins which are built of nucleotides and proteins. Chromosomes vary in both length and sequence. The main protein in the chromatins are histones which help compact the DNA creating the complete chromatin complex. This complex of nucleotides and proteins is then condensed to create the chromosome. So genes are basically a portion of the DNA sequence and are included in the chrom chromosome structure. Now as we all are aware, a human bodies, there are over 20,000 genes and each gene performs a specific function. For example, some genes they determine hair color, a height, while the other ones they control how our bones are formed, how our organs are formed, how do our organs function. Most of our genes come in pairs. Uh, as we all are aware, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes and uh, one we get from our mom and one we get from our dad. Typically both the copies from the pair are functional but there are also genes that are non-functional. So there are 23 pairs of chromosomes that constitutes of 46 chromosomes. The father that is a male uh, usually is XY and the female is XX. This is a sex determining chromosome that is a 23rd pair of chromosome. So if the father gives the X and the mother also gives X, it forms two X. So XX will be a female. Whereas if the father gives Y and the mother gives X, it will be XY. So that will be a male. The scientists, they have estimated that we each have approximately 20 non-working genes. That's quite a figure. So this usually doesn't cause a problem. Otherwise, we would be thinking, oh my god, 20 non-working genes, that means, are we all abnormal? No, definitely not. If one gene doesn't work, the other one is there to take over its function. But this is not true for all the genes. There are many conditions where if one gene of the pair is not working, the other one cannot make up for it and it can cause a genetic disease. While we usually have two copies of each chromosome, that means two copies of each gene, there is one exception, that is our sex chromosome. The 23rd pair of chromosome that is also called as the sex chromosomes. So women generally have two X chromosomes, therefore two copies of all the genes that are there on the X chromosome, whereas men have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome and therefore only one copy of the genes on the X chromosome. Now let's take a look at what do you mean by inherited diseases. A disease caused by a change or mutation in an individual's DNA sequence. It's called as inherited disease. Now we all are aware of this. Our DNA provides a code for making proteins, the molecules that perform most of the functions in our body. However, when a section of our DNA is changed in some way, the protein it codes for, it also gets affected and thus it may not be able to carry out its normal function. Now depending on where these mutations occur, either they can have little or no effect or they can have a very profound effect by even altering the biology of the cells in our body and this basically results in a genetic disorder. So genetic disorders are basically grouped into three main categories single gene disorder, chromosomal disorder and multifactorial disorder. The single gene disorder disorders caused by defects in one particular gene 
often with simple and predictable inheritance pattern. The disorder that is caused by defect in only one gene is called a single gene disorder in simple language. It is further subdivided into two types x link disorder and autosomal disorders. Now as we all are aware we have 23 pair of chromosomes. 1 to 22 pair that is a non-sex determining chromosome they are called as autosomal chromosomes whereas the 23rd pair that is the sex determining chromosomes they are called as X chromosomes. So any disorder linked to the sex determining chromosome is called as X linked disorder whereas uh, any disorder that is linked to 1 to 22 chromosomes pair it is called as autosomal disorder. So we'll take a look at all these terminologies one by one. X linked disorder, single gene disorder that reflect the presence of an altered gene on the X chromosome, autosomal the gene responsible for phenotype that is located on one of 22 pair of autosomes that is non-sex data mining chromosome then there are also terms like dominant and recessive in the previous slide we saw the x link disorder and the autosomal disorder they are further divided into dominant and recessive let's take a look at these terminologies Dominant is single gene disorder that occur when an individual has one altered copy of the relevant gene and one healthy copy. Example is Huntington's disease. Recessive gene disorder, again it is a single gene disorder that occur when an individual has two altered versions of the relevant gene. For example, cystic fibrosis. Now in order to proceed further there are also few terminologies that we need to understand only then we'll be able to understand the entire concept behind this gene therapy. So the thing that we need to understand is the difference between gene and allele. A gene is a stretch of DNA or RNA that determines a certain trait thus we saw in the previous slides. So the genes can mutate, it can take two or more alternative forms. So this allele is nothing but one of these forms of a gene. For example, the gene for eye color has several variations such as an allele for blue eye color, allele for brown eye color. So this allele is found at a fixed spot on a chromosome. The chromosomes they occur in pair, so organisms have two alleles for each gene. One allele in each chromosome in the pair. Since each chromosome in the pair comes from a different parent, organisms inherit one allele from each parent for each gene. The two alleles inherited from parents may be same or different. We'll study it in detail. Each organism has two alleles for every gene on each chromosome. If the two alleles are the same, that is they both code for blue eyes, they are called as homozygotes. But if they are different, one is coding for blue eye, other one is coding for the brown eye, they are called as heterozygotes. In the case of heterozygotes, the individual may express either one or a combination of the two traits. Now these alleles can be again dominant or recessive. A dominant allele is one that will always be expressed if present, either alone or with another dominant allele example the allele for Huntington's disease is dominant so if an individual inherits an allele for Huntington's from only one of the parents still they will have the disease whereas on the other hand the recessive allele will be expressed only if only in the presence of another recessive allele that is if it is found on both the genes so the basic difference between gene and allele a section of DNA that controls a certain trait whereas allele is a specific variation of a gene. Now if eye color is the gene, allele is blue eyes, green eyes. If blood type is a type of gene, then type A, type B, type O. If skin color is a type of gene, then the allele will be black skin, white skin. Now in this diagram as you can see human beings have 23 pair of chromosomes the chromosomes they vary in length they vary in the function that they perform the 23rd 
pair of chromosome is the sex determining chromosome whereas the rest 22 chromosomes the other non sex determining chromosome chromosome they are also called as autosomal chromosomes so the males will have this 23rd chromosome as x y whereas the females will have this 23rd chromosome as x x now for example this is one gene that we are talking about it will have a pair of chromosomes and obviously allele will be present each allele will be present on each chromosome as you can see these two versions of a gene code for a trait such as hair color so maybe this allele is coding for brown hair color this allele is coding for black hair color so if this is a homologous pair of chromosomes this is the locus for hair length gene this allele is coding for short hair this allele is coding for long hair so depending upon which allele is dominant that particular trait will be expressed for example this is the locus for hair color gene this allele is coding for white hair color this allele is coding for black hair color so whichever allele is dominant that particular trait will be expressed so this homologous pair of chromosomes cro constitutes of one gene dominant versus recessive now genes determine the traits or characteristics such as eye skin or hair color of all organisms each gene in an individual consists of two alleles that is one comes from the mother and the other one comes from the father some alleles are dominant some alleles are recessive now if what happens if a dominant allele is paired with a recessive allele obviously the dominant allele will determine the characteristic when these traits or characteristics are visibly expressed they are known as phenotype the genetic code behind a trait is known as genotype so basic difference between dominant and recessive when an allele is dominant characteristic it is connected to will be expressed in an individual whereas when allele is recessive the characteristic it is connected to is less likely to be expressed unless and until both the alleles are recessive in an individual the dominant allele is usually uh, represented by uppercase letter whereas a recessive allele is usually represented by a lowercase letter a simple language dominant allele is a stronger one recessive allele is the weaker one the dominant one can express its phenotype in both heterozygotes and homozygotes whereas the recessive one can express its phenotype only in homozygous state or when the dominant allele is absent we'll understand it further with the help of few examples now dominant versus recessive this is a very simple example to understand that a dominant allele is expressed even if it is paired with a recessive allele whereas a recessive allele is only visible if it is paired with another recessive allele now, for example this capital b that is the brown color of the cat is the dominant allele whereas the small p gray color of the cat that is a recessive allele now we can see in this sequence there are two dominant alleles that are grouped together so obviously the dominant trait will be visible this is the reason the cat is brown in color whereas in this cat one dominant allele is paired with another recessive allele even if one dominant allele is present it will be expressed and this is the reason the brown color is expressed in the cat and the cat is brown in color whereas for the recessive allele to represent its characteristic it has to be paired with another recessive allele so the recessive allele will show its characteristic only in absence of dominant allele so when two recessive alleles are paired together the recessive trait will be visible that is the cat will be gray in color we'll see few more inheritance examples let's take eye color the allele for the brown eye that is capital b is dominant and the allele for blue eye that small b is a recessive one so if a person receives dominant allele from both parents capital b it will be obviously it will be which kind of eyes the person will have brown eyes but 
what if it receives a dominant allele from one parent and a recessive allele from the other then what will be the color of the eyes because one dominant allele is present still the eyes will be brown in color but if she receives a recessive allele from both the parents that is the dominant allele is absent over here both are recessive alleles so the recessive color will be expressed that is the eyes will be blue in color So the genotype is considered homozygous when an individual has either two dominant alleles or two recessive alleles. The genotype is considered heterozygous when an individual has one dominant allele and one recessive allele. We'll take one more example wherein with the help of a Punnett square we will demonstrate the probability of inheriting a certain trait. Again take an example of eye color. The mother is having one dominant and one recessive gene. The father is having one dominant and one recessive gene. So the, if we take a probability of four kids, the very first kid will have two dominant alleles. So it will be obviously brown color eye. The second will have one dominant and one recessive allele. Because of the presence of the dominant allele, again the kid will have brown eyes. The third kid again will have brown eyes. But the fourth kid, because there is an absence of dominant allele and both are recessive allele. This kid will have blue eyes. Now if one of the parents is has both the dominant alleles that is capital BB then it is impossible for the child to have blue eyes. This we can see in this next table. If one mother is if one of the parents that is mother has both capital B that is dominant gene and the father has one dominant and one recessive allele. So what will happen? All the kids will have one dominant allele. That means all the kids will have brown eyes. None of the kid can have blue eyes. Now what do you mean by dominant gene diseases? A dominant gene means that a single allele can control whether the disease develop. If only one parent passes on an autosomal defective gene which results in the child having a genetic disorder, then the disorder is called autosomal dominant. We'll take example of Huntington's disease over here. Let's take this is the father contributing the allele having a dominant gene and the mother is contributing an allele with a recessive that is a recessive allele and the father is contributing a dominant allele so the four kids that will be there they will have dominant allele present with them so they will be affected by the disease whereas the fourth kid will have both recessive alleles so that means the fourth kid will be unaffected so there is a probability of 75% of the kids having the disease and 25% not having the disease now let's see the concept of recessive gene diseases a recessive gene means that there is enough normal protein product to function properly from the normal gene and therefore two copies of the defective gene are necessary for the disease to develop. Let's take an example. If both the parents are infected and they each pass on a defective gene causing their child to be effective, then the disorder is autosomal recessive and the parents are called carriers because they both were unaffected but still they were carrying the defective gene. Examples are sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, now, thalassemia is an inherited recessive blood disorder that is characterized by reduced rate of synthesis of one of the globin chains that make up hemoglobin, thus causes formation of abnormal hemoglobin molecules causing anemia. Whereas sickle cell anemia is a recessive disorder characterized by abnormal hemoglobin production. The genetic defect involves a gene that produces hemoglobin in both the disorders. Now although the sickle cell carriers produce in part abnormal hemoglobin, they don't always experience clinical manifestation since the normal hemoglobin produced from the normal gene is enough to function formally. 
normally. Now we can see in this picture these are the normal red blood cells whereas in sickle cell anemia these RBs they become sickle shaped they no longer contain their flexibility they become rigid due to which you know they can even block the arteries whereas the normal RBCs they are pretty flexible they can easily pass through the arteries whereas in thalassemia we can see these are the normal red blood cells whereas in thalassemia the red blood cells are malformed and that reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the RBC so this is what happens in recessive gene disorder both the parents are carrier this is the reason they are unaffected but when they pass on their genes so there are chances that 50% of the kids will be carrier, 25% will be unaffected and 25% will be affected. Thank you.